Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. But we are no longer talking about really the field, we are talking about an application, the capacitor. And today we are talking about a special uh, case uh, where we have a capacitor and a resistor put together, so an RC element. Here we see this RC element, you look. This is the R, this is the C, the R in series connection. I have an input voltage, I have an output voltage somewhere. So the output voltage is the voltage at the capacitor uh, and the input voltage is at the series connection. Important is that we again, like we did, did with the voltage divider here, I is zero amps. Uh -huh. This is our premise that there is no load at this. Actually, it is a voltage divider between an R and a C. And our input voltage should follow this, this curve here. This is how the shell look like. Okay? So this is, this is our UI here. And now, we know how it looks when we charge, right? We said, okay, let's have a look at one case. Yeah? So, we actually, we have a time constant here, this time constant tau. Hmm? This was R multiplied by C. And this somehow defines how this uh, charging is, is done. Let's say, in one case, we have here a tau. Hmm? So this is the steepness, so the charging will look like, will look like that. Here we are, here, and here we have the same, down and up again. This is how this output probably looks like, right? Up again, and also here after a longer time, this should say this should this should mean a longer time has passed. After a while, it looks like that, exactly the same as at the beginning as at the beginning. This is at a certain as at a certain time constant. Is tau one, huh? so we have a tau one. How would it look if we have a, another time constant, a tau two, huh? and this tau two is bigger? Then we are here somewhere. Huh? Then it would be not that steep up, huh? and probably just reach the end. Huh? So it would look like that somehow. All right? Because it's simply charged slower. Now let's make this even a little bit more. So let's say we have a tau 3. So this means here we are no longer charging to full. So this means we are also not falling down to full. This means we are no longer starting at zero, so we will charge a little bit further. And then fall again a little bit. But maybe not that. And in the end, we will have, a, we will have it like that, that we are swinging with a certain swing. 
around the average value. Here, this is the average value of the input voltage. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. What is happening if we are again go further? Hmm. We have a tau 3 now. Hmm. Then we would charge not that high. Fall down. Charge a little bit higher. Fall down. Charge a little bit higher. And so on. And we will end up at a, again at a swing around this middle value. But this swing will be not that high anymore. Okay. And now I make a final tau. Oh, tau 3. Tau 5, it's meanwhile. Tau 4, of course. <laughs> and here, we're just going a little bit up. Falling down. Going a little bit up, a little bit further. Falling down. Going a little bit further and so on. And in the end, we will have it look like that, that we are... changing around the middle frequency but not too much all right this is how this is happening yeah so after a while yeah, we will have only a little swing what is this while well the while is not that that much i mean these time constants are usually usually very very small we know that yeah, and I, I now explained it like the time constant would change. So if somebody would constantly change R and C or something like this, yeah? but it's only a relative value, of course. Yeah, we can also imagine the frequency is getting higher and lower. At higher frequency, the tau is relatively big. At lower frequency, the tau is relatively low. And now let's have a look what is happening if we have a tau zero, which is even smaller. Then we're going up here, Zack. the smaller the time constant is, the more it looks like the actual frequency, the input frequency. So the smaller tau is, this means the smaller, the, the, the lower the frequency is. Yeah? Then if it's a very low frequency, then even a big tau is relatively small. So it's just relative. Yeah? So low frequency almost look like they look here. Yeah? And high frequency, then they are in the end, they are just only the average value. Yeah? This is why low frequencies may pass, high frequencies are leveled. Okay? This is why this is called a low pass filter. And now I've shown you how it looks. Yeah. And now we have a look at the computer. I've, I've done an Excel sheet to show you exactly a calculation that we can really get a feel how it really looks. All right. So let's switch to the computer. So here we see the swinging. We have UI. This is the dotted line. And we have the blue line. That's U. And we see they are looking the same. Why are they looking the same? Because we see the swinging is, these are seconds here. So the swinging is always one second up, one second down. One second up, one second down. One second up, one second down. Yeah. So it is actually, uh, two, two seconds by swing. It's half a hertz. Uh, and the time constant with my R and C I've chosen R 10 ohms and C uh, 1 milli millifarad. This is 0 0.01 seconds. So what does this mean? This means we have one second time to charge or decharge, and in 0 0.01 second we have a time constant. So in 0 0.05 seconds we are practically there. We cannot see anything. This fits perfect. Uh, so this 
is pretty, this is the same swing. Yeah? And now let's see what is happening if I raise R. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we have only one zero dot one second time constant, and we already see this going up, going down. Yeah, the smoothing of the rising edge, yeah, of the falling edge, the smoothing of the edges. We see it already. This is simply because the time constant is now higher. Yeah? Let's make it a little bit higher as well. Yeah. This is exactly what I tried to draw here. Um, and now, this is now really calculated. This is how it would look like in real. All right. Now, uh, now we have the case where we start down here, you see, at zero. Then we're not reaching the top. We're going down uh, and we're not reaching zero again. Going up, we're a little bit higher probably here. We are probably a little bit higher. It's, I don't know. Can you read it out? But in the end, it looks like it would swing exactly like that. Yeah? So let's make it 500. Aha. There we see a little bit better what is happening. At the beginning we are charging, then we are decharging, but not as far because we, and here we are charging a little bit higher. This point is already a little bit higher like that. So we need some swings that we are reaching a stable condition. If we shift this here, now I, I, the swing is starting minus five seconds in the past. Now it's stable. Huh? So in the end, after a longer time, it looks stable. All right. So let's have a look if we go it, we, if we make it even further. Ah, now we see exactly what is going on. We charge up to here. We down up to here. We charge further down, and then it will swing around the middle value, which is here 0 0.5. Uh, again, if I am Looking only at a later portion of time, I don't see this beginning. Yeah, I only see the the stable, the stable swinging afterwards, and we see it swinging again. So let's again make it a little bit slower. Ah, yeah, we're going up, and of course we again have the stable swing later in time. Yeah. Oh, let's make it more. Ooh, yeah. Here we see what is going on. We're going up, a little bit down, going up, a little bit down. And the further we go up, the, the faster the decharge will also get. And after a certain amount of time, let's see if I, ooh, we are not even there yet. Minus 15. Ah, that's maybe a little bit too, In the end, it will be leveled because at minus 20, yeah, there my, my, my Excel sheet is, is, is stopping. Yeah. So in the end, we will be leveled. Let's see if I'm, I'm using, ooh, this is maybe 6,000. Yeah. Minus 50. Yeah. Here, here we would be swing only a little bit around the middle value. Maybe it's still rising. Yeah. And how does this look at the beginning? Like that. Going up, 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 up. Up, 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 and then we will end up in a stable, in a stable swing. Yeah. So, you see, depending on the filter time constant, frequencies may pass or may not pass. Yeah. But what frequencies are passing? What frequencies may not pass? Yeah. There is a thing called a uh, border or, or Grenzfrequenz in German. It's cutoff frequency in English. Uh, cut-off frequencies, because so it's where the filter is cutting off the frequencies. Okay, and I'm going to explain you the cut-off frequency here on uh, on the sheet again. So let's switch back to the sheet. So this tau here, this tau here, we said this is the time constant. Okay, this is called time constant.
And the cutoff frequency, cutoff frequency, frequency is defined as omega zero is one divided by tau. So one divided by the time constant. Okay. And it's measured in second minus one. Or actually it's measured in one rod by second. Uh, second minus one. This is not the real frequency we have seen there. Yeah? The real frequency is would be f and is omega zero divided by two pi. So omega zero is two pi f0 yeah? and f0 is measured in hertz swingings per second yeah? not rad per second in swingings per second yeah? this is because um, because we have um, f 2 p rad in a full rotation yeah? so Actually, this omega is 1 divided by tau. Uh, and if I want to have the frequency, uh, the, the re frequency I can see, uh, then we have to multiply, the, multiply this by 2 pi. And how does this look now? What, what is now the cutoff frequency? Which, which of those uh, colorful lines are, are now, would represent closely the cutoff frequency? Well, Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We have this. So we said we have a, a time at a constant a, 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 a t of our swing of two seconds. Hmm? This was the period time. Huh? This is the period time. So our f of the swing is one divided by t, and this is one divided by two seconds. This is zero dot five hertz or one half hertz. So this means this means our omega would be two pi f and this is two pi and a half second of minus one. So this is pi seconds minus one. Hmm? And our our uh, tau, if this would be our, this is now our our frequency, yeah. And I want to set our tau exactly like it would be our frequency, yeah. So this means tau equals one divided by omega. So this is one divided by pi uh, seconds. If I can manage to use this as a time constant, uh, I would see how is, is this picture looking. Uh, and let's see what is 1 divided by tau, uh, by, <laughs> by pi, 0 to 3, 1, 8. Uh, so we have to set 0 to 3, 1, 8, 3 seconds, then Omega g equals uh, pi seconds and fg equals 0 to 5 hertz. If I can achieve a tau of 0 to 3183 seconds, my, my uh, cutoff frequency is 0 to 5 yeah? and my cutoff frequency Put it all over here. Yeah. <laughs> Cutoff frequency is 0 0.5, and I should see this picture. So let's switch back to the computer. So what we said, uh, 0 0.3183. So we'll simply adjust as 318. Okay, that's it. Yeah, 0 0.13. 0 
three. Yeah, exactly. This is how the swing would look when we cut off frequency. We can also have a look at later in time. It looks a little bit strange, right? So, why is this defined as cut off frequency? It's just something in the middle. Well, it is this is defined as cutoff frequency because if we would if this would not be a rectangle that's swinging but a sinus swing, yeah, then our amplitude would now be reduced to approximately 70%. Yeah, one divided by square root of two. This and there is of course a reason why it's called cutoff frequency. We will see this in another video. Yeah, there's a series of video about uh, uh, controls with feedback loops. Yeah, you can watch this series of video. And there is also a video about exactly this element. This then is not called RC or low pass filter. This is called the PT1 element because it's a filter with one time constant, T1. Yeah? Uh, and um, there it will be clear what the cutoff frequency really is. Yeah? Right now we have to remember, okay, the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter is 1 divided by the time constant and this is not the frequency, this is omega, so the, the rotary speed. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we also know how this swing would look like at the, at the cutoff frequency. Low pass filter. There's also a possibility to build a high pass filter. So a filter where only big frequencies may pass and low frequencies are cut off. How this is working, I will explain in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.